Golden Age of Comic Books, month number 17. These are all the comic books with a cover date of October 1939. This is the 17th month of the Golden Age, which ties in to Action Comics number 17 being on the newsstands. Let's look at all the comics on the newsstands that month. 31 titles. This is tied with the same amount as last month. This is the highest that it had ever been and shows the extreme growth of comic book sales and popularity in new titles and publishers emerging in 1939. Let's analyze what was on the newsstands that month. By far the most historically important book of the month is Marvel Comics number no. 1. It is the first comic from Timely Comics ever published. The company would later change their name to Marvel Comics, named after this very first comic they released. It features the Human Torch and the Submariner. Very key book and it is by far the most valuable book of the month on the newsstands. We can see the Overstreet Price Guide lists a low grade copy at $26,000 and a high grade at $575,000. So this book alone represents about two thirds of all the value of all the books combined released that month. Also out this month is Speed Comics number one. It's from another new publisher, Brookwood Comics. And they would release only the first 11 issues before Harvey Comics, another new publisher, would take over the title. And this is a historic book as well, but much scarcer and much cheaper in general, but still has a pretty good hefty price tag, $389 for a low-grade copy of this number one issue. Debatably, the most important book of the month might be Superman number two. Superman has proven his popularity is so strong that he is not a one-hit wonder. They've released a second issue of Superman in this quarterly title from DC Comics. And the print run and sales for number two were 850,000 copies and they would even sell out and they would rush back and do a second printing. None of the price guides or any of the historical sites uh, differentiate between the two printings so they're lumped together as one book. And when you do that you'll find that the combined sales are 1 million copies for Superman number two. This is the first comic book ever to sell that many copies. Therefore, that makes it the best-selling comic book of the 1930s and therefore the most common book to find. And you can see on the CGC census, 160 copies have been graded. That is by far the record of the most common book on the CGC census. Only three high-grade copies, of course, because high-grade is a, another matter altogether of books surviving for many decades in high grade. That's a very rare thing. And we'll see that the only two books that actually have a few copies graded high grade are Marvel Comics number one and Superman number two. And again, due to the heftiest price tags, those are the two most valuable comic books of the month. And yet, the most common books to find. But it's their historic importance that has driven the prices up on those two books. David McKay gives us Magic Comics number three only five copies graded. So that brings up this point of looking at the CGC census, but really starting to see a big variety in the number of books graded. The, the uh, scarce non-superhero titles are generally not as valuable and therefore not many copies getting graded. So if we look at the CGC census, we'll see there's two books on the list, in fact, that have zero copies graded in any condition. That is Super Comics number 17, and Ace Comics number 31. Zero copies in any grade. Uh, but they also have low price tags, which again, because these are non-superhero books, that is why they are cheaper. That is why nobody's bothering to get them graded. They are nevertheless still scarce books. But the CG census is harder to follow when we see that the popular books get graded a lot. What else do we see? Does have lots of graded copies? Well, Action Comics number 17 featuring a new Superman cover, 72 copies graded. We've also got Detective Comics number 32. This is the sixth appearance of Batman ever, but he is not on the cover of this particular issue. And after that, we've got Mystery Men Comics number three from Fox Comics, 25 copies graded, so not too scarce there. Uh, if we look at what books seem to be truly scarce, well, as I say, there are lots of books that only have a few copies graded, but usually we've got to look for key books, superhero books, or, you know, anything of historical importance to see if there's anything that truly stands out as being rarer. So if we take that point of view and we look at what seems to truly be scarce, 
Well, we've got all American comics in number seven from DC. Only four copies graded. It's not a major key book, but nevertheless, that's that's a pretty low CGC census rating for that book. Some of the Centaur books are all under 10 copies graded. That's pretty scarce. What else do we notice on the chart? There's still a ton of books on the list that have zero high grade copies. Again, these are 1930s books. They just simply have not survived. If we total up the 31 books and use the average of 200,000 copies printed of each book, that means there were 6.2 million comics on the newsstands this month. Out of the 6.2 million, only 541 of them have survived and been graded by the CGC in any condition. And it gets much rarer yet when we continue with only the high grade books and we say that only 25 copies on the entire list. That average is to less than one copy per book has survived and been graded by the CGC. If we look at the Overstreet Annual Price Guide, we see predictably the superhero books and the key books have the most high price tags. Uh, DC usually leads the pack, though Marvel with their first comic leads the pack this week. Um, if we look at the cheap end, Ace Comics number 31 is by far the cheapest book on the entire list. Only $22 for this 80 year old comic and only $300 in high grade. And again, there are no copies graded, but that gives you an idea that there is some really truly affordable comics from the 1930s that you can collect. We do have a running total there. You can see if you wanted to buy a complete run of all of these books in low grade, it would cost you $35,000 based on the Overstreet Price Guide or a big $761,000 for a high grade set. And of course, that might be impossible to do, but you definitely could attempt it. What else do we learn from the chart? Well, let's look at the actual comic book sales that we have documented for this month. It's very interesting to see what was actually popular at the time. Superman number two had two printings. We see 850,000 copies printed. It's believed that Marvel Comics number one had a print run of 800,000 copies. Um, don't have official data for that, but I've read that for sure. Uh, what else was selling popular? Based on the stats we have, Tip Top Comics at 409,000 copies was the best-selling non-superhero comic book at the time. That's a, a tremendously high number. We see that Famous Funnies was still very popular at 311,000. And Feature Comic, always extremely, extremely popular at 355,000 copies. After that, the sales dropped down quite a bit. Some of the titles, we have to divide them up. We know that uh, Superman n number two and each month of action comics also featuring Superman were the best selling comics. If we look at the DC group, you can see that the four DC titles have been lumped together, but action comics is probably half of that, which means that that leaves us with about 700,000 for the other three books divided. So that means Detective Comics featuring Batman was probably selling roughly 240,000 copies at this point in his early issues. The Dell titles are selling at roughly 200,000 each. The Fox titles are selling roughly 230,000 each in these early superhero books. The Western titles are selling approximately 190,000 each. We don't have any documentation for the books that are not listed on this particular list. Comics on Parade, 197,000. So you can see that it's very consistent that sort of the majority of the titles are in the close to the 200,000 range at this point. And only it's really just the Superman related titles that are way ahead.